so this is the heart human heart and it has got an apex as i told you which is directed downwards inferiorly and towards the left side and this will be the base behind you won't be able to see the base unless i turn the specimen so the base is directed towards the right side superiorly and posteriorly apex is directed downwards inferiorly and towards the left side anteriorly this is the sternocostal surface of the heart the heart is resting on the diaphragmatic surface this is the left lateral surface this is the right lateral surface so as i told earlier right side chambers will be dominant anteriorly left side chambers will be dominant posteriorly similarly the ventricles will be more anterior corresponding to the atria which are posterior to the ventricles this is because of the rotation of the heart around the vertical axis in a clockwise direction so that right chambers become dominant than the left chambers and again upwards around the transverse axis so that ventricles become more dominant anteriorly than the atria now let us see about the apex of the heart this is formed fully by the left ventricle this is the sternocostal surface of the heart formed by right chambers on the right two third and left one third is formed by the left chamber amongst the right chamber the right atrium and right ventricle will be forming right two third of the sternocostal surface and a small portion of left ventricle and a small left auricle which is not clearly seen in this specimen this is small portion is called as left auricle this is too small in this specimen some specimens it will be bigger and will be occupying this area this is the pulmonary trunk arising from the left right eight ventricle and this is the ascending aorta emerging on the right side of the pulmonary trunk so sternocostal surface formed by right atrium right ventricle left ventricle and a small portion of left auricle pulmonary trunk and ascending aorta the right atrium and right ventricle will be separated by anterior part of the coronary sulcus similarly right ventricle and left ventricle will be separated by the anterior interventricular groove then comes the right surface of the heart this is formed by right atrium and superior vena cava this is the orifice of inferior vena cava and this is orifice of superior vena cava extending between svc and ivc the important landmark on the right surface is a deep groove called the sulcus terminalis at the cranial end of sulcus terminalis in the root of the svc is the presence of sa no so this is an important landmark on the right surface of the heart this is the left surface of the heart this is formed by left ventricle and a small portion is contributed by left auricle both the right and the left surfaces will be related to the corresponding medial surfaces of the right lung and the left lung and intervening between the lungs and the heart will be the phrenic nerve and pericardiophrenic vessels embedded in the pericardium now i am going to turn the specimen and show you the diaphragmatic surface and the base of the heart now i am going to turn this specimen so that you will be able to see the diaphragmatic surface and base of the heart so this is the diaphragmatic surface of the heart formed by left ventricle and the right ventricle as i have turned towards upside down the left chambers have come to the right side and the right chambers have gone to the left side so this is right ventricle and this is left ventricle forming the diaphragmatic surface of the heart both are separated by posterior interventricular groove or sulcus above the diaphragmatic surface this is the base of the heart this is the apex correspondingly behind and superiorly will be the base as you can see the base is formed by the two atria the left atrium and the right atrium since this is a posterior aspect you can see the posterior dominant hemispheres will be left whereas anterior dominant hemispheres will be the right so this is the base of the heart formed by left atrium on the left two third and right one third is contributed by right atrium these are the four pulmonary veins the right pulmonary vein and the left pulmonary veins opening into the left atrium this is the arch of aorta this is the pulmonary trunk so right and left pulmonary veins opening into the left atrium this is right atrium receiving the opening of ivc 
and SVC. This is interatrial groove separating the left atrium from the right atrium. This is posterior part of the coronary sulcus separating the diaphragmatic surface formed by the two ventricles from the base of the heart formed by the two atria. So, diaphragmatic surface formed by left ventricle and right ventricle separated by posterior interventricular groove. Base of the heart formed by left atrium and right atrium. IVC and SVC opening into right atrium. Four pulmonary veins opening into left atrium. The atrial chambers forming the base are separated from the ventricular chambers forming the diaphragmatic surface by posterior part of the coronary sulcus. This will be lodging the coronary sinus that is the vein of the heart. The great cardiac vein which is draining into the left end of coronary sinus and small cardiac vein draining into the right end of the coronary sinus. Circumflex branch of left coronary artery and right coronary artery both will be anastomosic. So, there is a small point in the heart here which is called as the crux of the heart. This is formed by posterior interventricular groove meeting point, coronary sulcus and interatrial groove. The interatrial groove, interventricular groove and atrioventricular groove all three grooves will meet at this point which is called as the crux of the heart. For the borders of the heart, the right border of the heart, this is formed by the right atrium and SVC. The inferior border of the heart, this is formed by right ventricle, the small contribution close to the apex is given by left ventricle. This is the left border of the heart formed by left ventricle and a small portion at the upper end is contributed by left auricle. The superior border is not visible anteriorly because of the emergence of pulmonary rectum and ascending iota, but it can be seen on the posterior aspect. This is the superior border formed by the left atrium and the right atrium. 1 cm to the inside of the apex along the inferior border of the heart, there is a small notch. This notch is called as incisura apicis cordis. This is the meeting point of four blood vessels. One is anterior interventricular artery. Then and the left marginal artery, these two are branches of left coronary artery. Then along the inferior border will be right marginal artery, then posterior interventricular artery. Both these four blood vessels will meet at the inferior border of the heart, 1 cm to the inside of the apex of the heart, which is called as incisura apicis cordis. This is the adult normal heart in a healthy individual. And this is the hypotrophied heart. This is to show you how hypertension can lead to enlargement of left ventricle, increased left ventricle size. This will lead to parasternal heave and increase in the area of cardiac dullness. So, this is right atrium, this is right ventricle, both are similar to the normal chamber. But the left ventricle is huge and hypertrophied. This patient may be a chronic hypertensive or may be having aortic valve stenosis leading to overwork of the left ventricle and leading to its hypertrophy. The same specimen you can see on the posterior aspect, you can see how left ventricle is huge, right ventricle is smaller, you can see the left atrium with the four pulmonary veins, superior and inferior left, superior and inferior right, this is the right atrium with IVC orifice and SVC orifice, this is sulcus terminalis. So, this is the arch of iota and this is the pulmonary trunk dividing into left pulmonary artery and right pulmonary artery.